Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. A question that has come from several of you. Can you please tell us where exactly does the soul lives after it is taken away from the body? In other words, after a person dies, where does the soul go? Between the life hereafter, which starts with the yawm al qiyamah, followed by the yawm, the hashr, uh, before that and after a person's soul leaves the body, there is a special world called the world of barzakh. That's where the soul lives till the day of judgment. And how do we know this? Quran talks about it. Surah Al Mu'minun, Quran says, And beyond this point, there is something called Barzakh, and that is their dwelling, dwelling place till the day of judgment happens. So, in this dwelling place, the word Barzakh, which pretty much means something that is stopping you from seeing a cross. That's why it's called Barzakh, because while living over here, we cannot see across the other side. However, there are ways through which we can communicate with them or they can communicate with us. And that is the world of dreams, in which our soul leaves the body temporarily and travels to a world where the world of souls start. But this world of souls is different from the world of souls that souls live in before they come over here and the human is born. That world of soul is different. The, the difference between the world of souls and the world of Barzakh is that the souls living in Barzakh have some connection with the body that is in the ground. Now, the body in the ground on earth doesn't have to be in the form of a grave, whatever it is, because sometimes people uh, die in water. Sometimes uh, people die um, and, and their body disperses into particles. It doesn't matter what is the form of the body. Body has somewhat connection with the soul in the barzakh. Whatever happens to the soul, body feels it. So to you, for example, in a grave, you're like, okay, th there's nothing left. The whole body has decayed. To you, it has decayed. But that decayed body itself is still available in some form of matter. That matter is now part of the soil, but that matter, whatever capacity it is in, still has connection with the soul in Barzakh. If soul is going through punishment, each and every particle over here will be feeling that punishment. And you do not need to be witnessing this with your eyes. And that is also a mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you don't get to see this with your naked eyes. Otherwise, a lot of us won't be able to live here anymore. And similarly, if the soul is in good shape or form and it is in the blessings, the body feels the blessings. And after a person dies, till the day of judgment, irrespective of humans or jinn, they are categorized, they are placed in different places in the barzakh. So barzakh is a massive, massive alam. It's a massive world compared to that of the planet Earth where we reside. In barzakh, some souls are at ease and some are not. And remember, a person dies when the person's time is over. Now, how the person's time gets over on the planet Earth or even outside in the space, because we have seen some astronauts, they die in outer space. Doesn't matter where the person dies, they all die on the time it is decreed on them. And that's called destiny. That's called the Qadr. But after the person dies, the person's soul is taken. And depending on the, 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 if, it, if it's the soul of a believer, then there's a different set of angels that come and receive the soul. And if it's of a disbeliever, then a different set of angels come and take the soul. And we have spoken about that in quite detail before, that how the soul is taken out of the body and how it is received by the angels and how it is passed from one angel to another angel and how it reaches the first heaven and whose, whose souls are allowed to enter the heavens and bow down in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and have an opportunity of meeting the other souls who have passed away before them and they have conversations 
and all of this happened that the body on the ground is still in the process of getting bathed and it's still in the process of getting buried and all of these things have already happened in heavens and the soul comes back and sees the person who is giving that soul um, uh, the ghusl before the janaza and, and the whole process of janaza and sees the people as they carry the body towards the grave. Soul is witnessing all of that. But today would like to um, talk about more or less that um, when, this, when the soul is, is uh, taken into the world of barzakh, what are the different places where soul resides? depending on even for the believer. So some believers' souls are uh, by their grave. They're, they're, they are closer to their grave and placement. As uh, reported by Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu anhu, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam said, إِنَّ الرَّجُلَ لِيَعْرَضُ عَلَيْهِ مَقْعَدَهُ مِنَ الْجَنَّةِ وَالنَّارِ And this is فِي قَبْرِهِ It's staying closer, closer to the grave. And then for some of them, they are by the Zamzam. And then for some of them, they are between the heaven and the earth. As reported by Mughira bin Abdul Rahman, that قال إن الروح إذا خرج من الجسد كان بين السماء والأرض حتى يرجع إلى جسده. And this is in Sharh al Sudur, page 236. And then when I said some are by the Zamzam, that is also reported in Sharh al Sudur, page 237, that أرواح المؤمنين في بئر Zamzam. And then for some of them, they are on the first heaven. For some of them, they are on the second heaven and all the way through the seventh heaven. As Abdullah ibn Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu reports, and this is uh, in Sharh al-Sudur, page 235, that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, and this is also reported by Sayyidina Abi Huraira radiallahu anhu. Uh, Abdullah ibn Umar reports it, and then Abdullah ibn Zubayr reports it, that لا تحزني فإن الأرواح عند الله في السماء وإنما هذه جثة. And then Abi Huraira reports that Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, that إِنَّ أَرْوَاحَ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ فِي السَّمَاءِ السَّابِعَةِ يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى مَنَازِلِهِمْ فِي الْجَنَّةِ that the souls of the believers are in the seven heavens and different they're placed ila manazilihim they're placed in different levels within the seven heavens and this is in sharh al-sudur page 235 and for some of the believers their souls is even higher than the seven heavens they are under the arsh under the arsh there are special lamps and they reside in around those lamps subhanallah 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 and this is reported by Abdullah ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu that qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has told us that this happens to some of the soul that they are living around those lamps. And what happens with these souls that they can go into Jannah and they can drink from the Anharul Jannah ta'kulu min thamariha they are they go and they eat from um, the fruits of the jannah and these and then they come back into those qanadil into those lamp that have been made min al-dhahbi mu'allaqatun fi dhill al-'arsh so now you will be like okay soul doesn't needs to drink or eat so what is the form of this soul that it eats and drinks Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala transformed these souls into the bodies of Jawf al tayr of a body of a bird. And this is reported by Sunan Abi Dawood in Kitab al Jihad fi Fadl al Shihada. So these are the arwah of Shuhada that they are transformed into green birds, tayr khadr. And then their, their souls stay in those temporary bodies and they hang around under the arsh and they go into the Jannah to drink from the waters of Jannah, eat from the fruits of Jannah and come back and rest under the arsh and they communicate like birds communicate. And when the day of judgment will happen, then these souls will be taken out from the bodies of those birds and will be put into their actual bodies in which they used to live on this planet earth when they were alive. Now Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when he says that do not call the shuhada that they have died. They are alive and they are given risk. 
So they're alive. Their souls are given other bodies to dwell in, to, in, in Jannah. Subhanallah. And Abdullah ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu also narrates this in Sharh al-Sudur, page 231. That in arshi fil jannah sha'al thumma ila so they go into the Jannah, whatever they want to do, and then they come back. Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. And some of them are in A'la Iliyin, as uh, comes in Sharh Sahih Muslim by Imam Nawawi in volume 2, page 286, that some of them are at that level. That this is where the Anbiya alayhim salatu was salam are. That al Anbiya usakinuna A'la Iliyin. And then in also in Sharh al-Sudur, page number 249, قال الحافظ ibn al-Rajal في أحوال القبور في ذكر محل الموت في البرزق أما الأنبياء عليهم السلام فلا شك إن أرواحهم عند الله في أعلى عليين But wherever they are, they have constant connection with their bodies. They are in constant connection with their bodies. Anybody who comes on their grave, they see that person from Barzakh. If they knew that person here, they recognize that person. They can hear when somebody is at their grave. And this is in Al-Fatawa Al-Hadithiyya, page number 14 and 15. عن مجاهد أنها تكون على القبور سبع أيام من يوم الدفن لا تفارقه ثم تفارقه بعد ذلك ولا ينافيه. And then it just goes on into the uh, detail. And when Hadith... ما من أحد يمر بقبر أخيه المؤمن كان يعرفه في الدنيا فيسلم عليه إلا عرفه ورد عليه السلام So anybody who goes by the grave of anybody that you know and you say salam to them, they recognize you. They recognize you from the barzakh. They can hear and they can recognize you. And this is reported by Ibn Abi Dunya. And then also in Sharh al-Sudur, page number 244, it states that arwah al mu'minina fi illiyin wa arwah al kuffar fi sijin that the souls of the believers is in illiyin and the souls of the kuffar are in sijin. Sijin is like a prison. Wali kulli ruhin bi jasadiha ittisalu al ma'nawi la yushbihu al ittisalu fi al hayat al dunya wal ushbihu shay'an bihi hal al naim wa in kana huwa ashad min hal al naimi ittisal. That means. Uh, the, that life is not exactly like the life over here in, in dunya, but it's a totally different state of life. It's pretty much like, you know, when somebody is sleeping and you are talking around them and they can hear you. And when they later on wake up, they can tell you that I heard you are talking and you are saying so and so. That is the state in which they are. You may think they are sleeping, but indeed they are not. They are in that state where are they are sort of kind of sleeping and sort of kind of hearing. It's a very different state. And for the ruh, the distance doesn't matter. For the, for the body, it does, but not for the soul. Soul is in a totally different world. Soul is a totally different species. For soul to look at something, to hear something, it is not bounded by that you have to be closer to the grave for it to do this. You know what I mean? Like, uh, and the soul has to be closer to the grave for you, it to be able to hear you. So the, the grave is like the house of the body. And soul has some connection with that house. So anybody who is coming at that house, the soul is able to hear, see, and reply back. For example, in order for you to understand this, Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu, who is, whose dad is also a companion, Amr ibn al-As radiallahu anhu. And he said, in the dunya, Jannatul al-kafir wa sijnul al-mu'min. That the dunya, the worldly life, is the heaven for the disbeliever and is a prison for the mu'min. And if you want to understand the mu'min, then when the mu'min leaves from here, he becomes free. He becomes free. That's why in Faidul al-Qadir, Sharh al-Jami' al-Saghir, under Hadith 5016, the people who explain this Hadith, the ulama writes, Inna nufus al qudsiya idha tajarradat ala al alaiq al badaniya tasalad bil malai al ala wa tara wa tasma' al kull al mushahid. That means that whenever good souls, when they depart from their bodies, they go to alam al malai al ala 
And then when they reach that point, they are connected with their bodies and they can listen, they can see as if they are present right over there. And it's also reported in hadith uh, that is reported uh, in Sharh al-Sudur, Ba'a Fadl al-Mawt, page 13, that إِذَا مَاتَ الْمُؤْمِنُ يُخَلَّى سَرْبُهُ يَسْرَحُ حَيْثُ شَا when, when a believer dies, then the ways are opened for the soul of the believer that wherever the soul wishes can go. But on the other hand, the souls of the disbelievers are sometimes wherever they are buried or in whatever capacity they are put to death according to their religious rituals. And some of them are in a special place in Yemen called Barhut. Some of them are chained in the first level of earth because there are seven levels of, 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 of Ard. Not earth, Ard. Some are in the first earth, Ard. Some are in the second Ard because uh, Ard is also seven, just like there are seven heavens. Because Quran says, well, ard mithlahun, as just like there are seven heavens, there are seven ard. You do not understand them, but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. So they are at different levels of the prison, imprisonment in different levels of ard. And this is Abdullah ibn Amr radiallahu anhu reports, and it is uh, then reported in Sharh al Sudur, page 234, that Arwah al fil ard sabi'ah. It's one of those seven ones. And then some of them are even below that in Sijin, that in Mahbusa uh, Tufis Sijin, as comes in Sharh al Sudur, page 232, Dhamra bin Habib reports it Mursal and Qala, Sa'al and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam an arwah al kuffar, that when it was asked, from the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam, that what happens to the souls of the disbelievers? Qala mahbusatun fi sijin, and they are actually locked up. They're locked up. They're not allowed to freely go like those of the believers. So these are some of the concepts um, I wanted you to be clear about. And at the same time, anybody who believes that after the soul leaves the body, goes in another body, and is sent back on earth, that is. Um, a, a, a belief that is of the disbelievers. This is batil. This is kufr. So um, in, in Arabic it is called atanasukh. Atanasukh is an aqidah al kufriya Hindus have this uh, belief that um, a soul is put into another body and is sent back on the earth. So if you have done good deeds, you will come back in a better body. And if you have done bad deeds, you will come back in the body of an animal. All of these are the beliefs of the disbelievers, not the beliefs of a believer. Once the soul leaves the body, it doesn't come back to the planet earth. It doesn't. So after death, this is aqidah, that after death, soul separates itself from the body. Soul doesn't die. Anybody who believes that soul is uh, mortal and it dies, that is the aqidah, that is incorrect aqidah. And you can find the details of that, you know, in Sharh al-Sudur, Ba Fadl al-Mawt, page number 12. Uh, similarly, um, in Imam Tabrani in Ma'jam al-Kabir and Imam Hakim in al-Mustadrak reports it from Abu Umar bin Abdul Aziz anahu qal, innama khalaqtum lil abda'i wal baqai You have been created to last. Walakinnakum tanqiluna min darin ila dar. You, but you transfer from one house to another, from world of souls to here in this dunya life. Then from here you get transferred to Barzakh life, from there you will transfer to the Hashar, and from there you will be transferred to the Jannah or Jahannam. So you're constantly changing your dar. So that's why when we say Kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut, that means every soul has to taste death. And you can only taste and, and live to tell if you are living after tasting it. Otherwise there is no point of tasting it. And when the soul leaves the body, soul communicates. But the jinns and the humans, they cannot, they cannot hear that communication. And this is reported by Abi Sa'id al-Khudri radiyallahu anhu that قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وآله وسلم إذا وضعت الجنازة فاحتملها الرجل على عناقهم فإن كانت صالحة قالت that when, when, when soul is good and you're taking that soul to get buried, 
قدموني قدموني وإن كانت غير صالحة قالت and then if the soul is of the bad person the soul says يا ويلها أين يذهبون بها but where are you taking me where are you taking me don't take me to the grave يسمع صوتها كل شيء Everybody hears the soul's cry or the soul saying that take me, take me if it's a good soul. إِلَّا الْإِنسَانِ Except for the humans. وَلَوْ سَمِعَهَا الْإِنسَانُ If the man will listen to that cry, will go nuts, will go crazy. لَصَعِقَ And this is Sahih al-Bukhari, Kitab al-Janais. And this is, you know, just, just, uh, just the tip of the iceberg. This is some of the information I wanted to share with you guys about the world of Barzakh. Again, if you're interested, Knowing more, understanding more things conceptually, how things are. Let me know in the comment section below and then we can have another episode. We'll talk more about Barzakh. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.